I think undertreatment of valve disease occurs because of two things. One, we don't fully follow the guidelines, moderate to severe disease, or all class one indications for intervention. But there is an underlying reason why we are, don't treat valve disease in a timely fashion. And that is because of this word moderate. Moderate is something that we invented. There is absolutely no data to support moderate valve disease. It is something we came up with. We took two extremes, divided it by three, and the middle one became moderate. And that leads to a lot of confusion, and therefore we end up the so-called wait and watch, or watchful waiting. Watchful waiting is a euphemism for neither watching nor waiting. It is not doing anything well. So I, I have looked at the data, and I, now I do this talk, which is my pet peeve about moderate valve disease. So I'll just show you some data. I don't have any conflict of interest for this. This is survival data on moderate AS. Aortic valve indexed uh, area is 0.71. That translates to about 1.3. That would be, if properly done and correctly done, would be moderate aortic stenosis. And this is all comers in an echo lab. So comparing those with moderate AS to people who had echocardiograms in an echo lab and did not have aortic valve disease. And that is the blue curve, and the yellow gr green curve is the ones with moderate AS. Look at what happens in five years. On the left side, at five years, a little over 50% of the patients who had normal EF, who came to the echo lab, are dead, and a little more than 50% with moderate AS are dead at five years. And whether you look at the two-year three data, three-year data, one-year, two-year, or three-year data, moderate AS do significantly less than their echocardiographic cohort that don't have moderate AS. On the right side, if you look at patients with moderate AS but have low gradients, um, that gradient was about 22, mean, uh, the median gradient in that group, they too don't do well at five years, neither at one year, two years, or three years. So the idea that moderate AS is a benign disease is something that is not in the literature. It is something that came out of the Ecolab, mild, moderate, and severe. And that is the reason why we sometimes don't pay attention to valve disease in the way it should be done. If moderate AS has had low ejection fraction, so this is comparing those with moderate AS in the same echo lab with low ejection fraction, less than 50%, compared to a cohort that did not have aortic valve disease but had heart failure, less than 50% EF. If you had moderate AS, you do not do well compared to your heart failure cohort. So moderate AS in any setting, normal ejection fraction or reduced ejection fraction or low gradient is not a good disease to have. This is, that is in the echo lab. How about expected mortality in a population of a comparable age compared to moderate AS? Because similar data exists for severe AS. On the left side, the expected mortality in a comparable population is shown. Look at the difference between moderate AS and the expected uh, mortality in a comparable population. A big difference. The moderate AS is a, not a benign disease. It doesn't matter what NYHA class you are in, your survival with moderate AS is not good. And sometimes moderate AS with mortality is spoken of as if they have chronic kidney disease or comorbidities and therefore it adds to the overall mortality. But it doesn't matter if you had minimal or no comorbidities with moderate AS, you still don't do well compared to the expected survival in a comparable population. Moderate AS is associated with decreased survival. When compared to those with no AS, whether you're symptomatic or asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic, it doesn't matter what your ejection fraction is, it doesn't matter how low the gradient is. And of course, there are many reasons why moderate AS may be misclassified, it may be severe AS, misclassified AS, but that is being a cynic. It, these are done in good labs with good data, 
And there is a large data now that confirms that. This is the largest data on Mater AS that was ever done. Uh, this is a national database from Australia. And you can see, both with respect to gradients and peak velocity, the blue bars represent mortality in Mater AS. When you have a peak velocity of two meters per second, two and a half, your mortality is much higher than it should be at that two meters per second. In the guidelines, we use four meters per second for severe AS. So that is okay, that may be severe, but the risk is continuous. It begins at a mean gradient of about 20 and increases all the way up to 40 and greater. So the idea that there is a categorical cutoff Below, above which we have more ex excess mortality is not a good thing. It's a continuous risk, and that is an important concept to bear in mind. There are trials that are looking at, uh, at uh, modern AS now. How did magically we start looking at modern AS and mortality? Because of all the data that I've shown you. So now we have the TAVR unload trial, which is looking at modern AS in low EF. And there is also the progress that is looking at modern AS in normal EF. So the, if there was a, ever a question about modern AS is a benign disease or not, I think these two trials, I know the results are not out yet, but they confirm the point that we are aware that modern AS is not a benign disease. I'll skip by this slide for the sake of time. What about MR? It's the same thing. There is a concept of staging in primary MR, for example, and depending on associated cardiac abnormalities, MR can be staged as one, two, three, just like cancer. If you have pulmonary hypertension, if you have right heart disease, if your right, left atrium is dilated, et cetera, based on those as shown on this slide, you could be in stage one, two, or three, or four. A better way to look at disease rather than saying mild, moderate, or severe. And for each incremental stage on the right side, you can see it is associated with increasing mortality. Clearly stage four is the worst, but stage two and three are not benign disease either. And those would fit in the so-called moderate category, if you will. And there is this data. On the right side, this is a subgroup of patients with moderate MR. And you can see that red area is stage two disease. At least 10% of them are in stage two disease, which means about a third of them are dead in 10 years if you have moderate disease. So it is important to recognize that there is a continuous risk even in mitral regurgitation. FMR is a different story altogether because we've had the longest debate in FMR about what is severe FMR. And if, to me, this data is compelling. If you look at the average mortality in all comers in FMR, functional MR, heart failure MR, that dashed line, horizontal line, is the average mortality in a cohort of MR patients, FMR patients. Look at what the risk is, excess mortality above that green horizontal line. That red line exponentially increases even at an EROA of 0.1. So sometimes as echocardiographers, when we get into these numbers, we get hung up on an EROA. And as somebody pointed out this morning, we can't just get hung up on one single number. An EROA of 0.2 in an FMR is bad disease. If correctly done, it is a bad disease. It's not a benign disease. Excessive mortality begins at a 0.1 EROA. And if you look at DMR versus FMR, this is again looking at excess mortality. Look at the horizontal black line, which is the average mortality in a matched population, not FMR patients or DMR patients, but or in a population. Look at where FMR starts. The, it is already above at any EROA. It is already, the excess mortality is already above the matched population mortality. So every EROA beyond that point is associated with an increasing risk in FMR. Tricuspid regurgitation, the largest database, again from Australia, looking at mortality risk in mild and moderate TR, right? These are mild and moderate. If you look at all those curves, 
except for the green line, everything else in a follow-up over 10 years is associated with excessive mortality. So the idea that we are dealing with mild, moderate, and severe disease is okay for the valve lesion, but it is not the same as whether we should treat or not treat because the disease is not a benign disease. Here is another example. We are used to now having torrential MR, a TR, massive TR. That's a great concept in the interventional lab. But prognostically, if you classify TR as torrential, massive, severe, or moderate to severe, prognostically, they don't differentiate these patients. They all do bad. Whereas, if you cluster them as populations, the red cluster on the left side, cluster two, versus cluster one, the green one at the bottom, you can actually show different prognostication in these patients. In other words, you don't get stuck with an EROA or a vena contracta, but you take those numbers in the context of everything that is going on with that patient. That's what AI does with clustering mechani mechanisms. And that is why we are beginning to recognize that mild to moderate disease and moderate disease is not a benign disease, whether it be AS, MR, or TR. So in conclusion, there is no such thing called mild, moderate, and severe disease. I do really believe that staging and Clustering will be the mechanism by which we will be looking at patient and patient management decisions, especially in valve disease moving forwards. Thank you.